light can a dirt bike get? What are the most cost efficient ways to reduce weight? And is it really worth it? If you like riding hard gnarly terrain, then lightweight dirt bikes are in their element. They are less tiring, easy to throw around, have a great power to weight ratio, and they're easy to lift when you are completely stuck. What are you doing to my new bike? <laughs> the world's lightest bike that could still be loosely seen as a dirt bike is the FX5, an interesting concept that bridges the gap between mountain bikes and dirt bikes. While the small engine won't appeal to many, something close to this weight and decent power could be possible when electric engines and batteries improve dramatically. Sick of that big heavy pig? Slip us $2,000 for our Wonderlight program, as seen on the Scams International TV show. For slow, hard terrain, the hybrid bikes span the gap between trials bikes and fully-fledged dirt bikes. There is always a compromise, though. The incredibly light Osser Explorer is simply a trials bike with a bigger tank and a seat, so it's very limited the moment you try and ride at a moderate pace and the weight increases as models become more capable of speed. For example, my current bike is a Beta Cross Trainer, which is brilliant for technical riding, very good for everyday dirt riding, but it's definitely unstable when you ride aggressively at high speed. If you do want a dirt bike under 100 kilograms that you can ride hard and fast, then there's always the motocross conversion we investigated recently. There are inevitable drawbacks with these conversions, but fast, experienced riders often find they can exploit the highly strung nature of these beasts and revel in the lightweight too. If price is no object, how light can you make one of these motocross bikes? Motocross Action Magazine did exactly this and spent US 10,000 to trim almost eight kilograms from the bike. The crazy part? Those titanium bolts and axles alone were over six grand. Before we look at practical ways to make your dirt bike lighter, let's get this into perspective with three key principles. First, focus on your own weight. Many riders get obsessed with losing weight from their bike instead of working on their riding skills. Most guys would benefit way more by spending money on coaching and fuel for their bikes than the latest titanium bling. And it's ironic how often these guys are overweight. Look, I never criticize anyone for how they choose to live their life. But if you are overweight, you will become a much better rider by losing a few kilograms from your body than a few kilograms taken off your bike. Second, it's much more important to lose unsprung weight from your bike than sprung weight. So start with the easy, cheap ways to make your wheels lighter first. And the third principle, when looking at reducing sprung weight, put more focus on weight higher on the bike. For example, a custom seat that is one kilogram heavier will affect the bike's handling more than a skid plate that is one kilogram heavier. So at a practical level, what are some basic ways to reduce weight and not spend a fortune in the process? Starting with unsprung weight, let's start with the free stuff. Avoid bling if you don't need it. Things like heavy duty chain guides, disc protectors, and extra rim locks are fine if you need them. Otherwise, they are just extra unsprung weight. Tires, these vary a lot in weight. So if you don't need tough tires, choose a lighter set next time. And the same with tubes. If you rarely get punctures, then thin tubes weigh a lot less than ultra heavy duty tubes. If you do need some puncture protection but want to stay lightweight, then the tubeless system can be well worth the money and often doesn't cost more than tubes in the long term. 
What about sprung weight? One of the most obvious ones that is so neglected, don't fill up your fuel tank if you don't need to. If it's a short ride or you keep looping back to your base, only half fill your tank. This costs nothing and saves you around four kilograms. Again, think about bling before you add it to your bike. Do you really need it? If you do, do you really need the heavy duty versions of hand guards and skid plates? In some cases, the carbon fibre versions are no more expensive. So if you don't need a heavy duty skid plate, you can save a bit of weight compared to the alloy ones without extra expense. If you are going ape shit about losing weight and want to throw money at your bike, often the next step is a lithium battery, which can drop a kilogram or two. If your standard exhaust is heavy, fine, look at an aftermarket one. But for God's sake, get a reasonably quiet one if you ride anywhere near the general public. There are more things you can do, but personally, I think that wraps it up for a common sense weight reduction approach that doesn't cost a fortune. Again, I think most guys go way overboard on this ship and inevitably you start to run into compromises with punctures or insufficient protection for your bike and simply wasting money on expensive shit. Keep it all in perspective Focus more on your own riding skills and your body weight <laughs> and enjoy your bike for what it is. Oh, and remember, you can always try laxatives and taking a big dump before you ride as well.